Dune. Ah, bien sûr. Hi everyone, welcome to I'll be sewing. Uh, so to the live stream, uh, I don't know if there's a few there. So we had a few problems we uh, with the other live stream, so created a new one. Hopefully um, you guys are all there now. Uh, so we're gonna get started on uh, a project that we're gonna do this week. Um, I know some of you prefer the video versus the live stream but unfortunately at this point right now it's uh, for me it's a little bit easier doing a live stream so because my kids go to university and sometimes they don't have time to put the clips together and um, and unfortunately to pay somebody it's not in the budget right now to pay somebody just to you know put all the clips together well for the videos that I record for you guys um, so what I'm going to be doing today is, um, you see this little binder here, it's a cover. As you see, I didn't put my snaps here too, but I'm going to put some snaps in here to close this up. And if you see here, there's also a pocket here. There's also going to have a snap here for, and I have here a, a tablet. And now um, I'm going to give you the measurement so you you guys can change the size of the, the pocket here to fit an iPad or a tablet, but I'm going to give you how you're going to measure and how you're going to figure out the size that you're going to need fabric-wise. Um, and this is, a, again, it's an extension of what we did the other two weeks because we created this bag before, two weeks ago. I'll show you guys to create this bag. We're still going to go through the steps really quickly, but you definitely, you already know how to make this bag. As you see, I have the tablet here, in here like this. But you also still have a nice big pocket in here that you can put something here and when you open um, this is something you can use for sewing um, this line of fabric it's um, one stitch at a time I think um, it's from Henry Glass I believe um, it's a really cute and I also use a little bit of this fabric here this one is actually from Northcott but all the other ones are from Henry Glass it's a really cute line um, and in here you see I also added a pocket you could also add another pocket here and then you know because it's a binder you can put your patterns you know whatever you need for we can also create some um, you know some pages some fabric pages to put in here so if you're going to a, a, a sewing a retreat or something you can definitely put a couple things in there you know uh, it's scissors or cutters or you know your patterns anything that you want in here you can add things so, or you can use this for school, whoever is in school and needs it, you know, or, you know, for the office, you need to, you know, it's a good idea to just have everything there and then, you know, you can use it that way also. So if you have any questions, you guys just ask through, I'm just going to go through the measurements of the materials that we're going to need. Um, I'm going to also show you how to measure how to get your measurements so if you have a different size binder how to adjust those sizes so hopefully that will help so I'm gonna put just the binder slightly here and um, I have a binder here so what are you gonna do anytime you're doing a cover for a book or a binder or anything like that what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure the binder close never measure anything open like that because when you close you're gonna need more more fabric here so you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna measure that all the way around so I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna bring it all the way around and I have about 22 and a half that's my measurement that's in inches right so you're gonna add to uh, to that uh, two more inches so if we have 22 and a half, you're going to bring it to um, 24 and a half. It's probably better if you just do the 25 even. So because even if it's slightly uh, bigger here, it's okay. At least you know you're not going to run short. So we'll do the 25 in this case. So I add two and a half, two and a half inches. I add it to my measurement here. So and in here, I had, I have here. So I have 11 and a half. So you're gonna also add 
two inches to that. So one inch to the top and one inch to the bottom. All right. So, um, so you're going to end up, if I have 11 and a half, you're going to bring that to about, uh, it would be 13 and a half. Just make it 14. So at least you have a little bit extra room. All right, but two two inches you will be okay. But just in case you know, depending on your seam allowance, just in case you're slightly bigger than what I'm gonna do on mine, then so at least if you have that extra half an inch, you know you're gonna be safe. Um, we also I'm gonna show you also um, how to measure the your iPad or uh, your tablet, whatever you want for this one here. So and uh, so I'm gonna just go through that. So I have my iPad here and I'm going to get these measurements that I have here. So I have here about five inches by eight and a quarter. All right. So put those measurements down and lay on. I'm going to say how many times the fabric we need these measurements by. All right. So for our outside fabric. I'm going to put my measuring tape here in this here and also this part. I'm just going to put it here so it stays safe. And we're going to start with the measuring measurements for um, our old side fabric of this here. So I picked a different uh, fabric here. Um, what is the name of this line, Adam? What is it called? It's from Northcott. Letterpress. Letterpress. So. The, the fabrics that I, I'm going to be using, it's called Leather Press, and it's from Northcott Studios. And for my old side fabric, I already went ahead and I cut uh, my two pieces. So I'm going to cut one for the outside and one for the lining. And my measurements here, as I told you how to measure, I have um, 25 by 14. That's my measurements that I have here. And if you see, if I put my binder in here, you see I have quite a bit extra on the top and on the bottom but it's because we have seam allowance and then we do a top stitch so we need to account for all of that and then we have the same piece and as if you see if you went by this you see it's a little bit less but when i go like this i need more fabric i have a little bit less here that's why i tell you to always fold it always measure measure it when your binder or your book is closed so we have two pieces of that we have that and this one for my lining. Oh, where's my lining? I'm using a green for my lining. Okay. Then I have for my pockets. Let's see. For the two pockets that I have here on the side. Yes, the pockets. The, these ones for the binder to fit in. But the, these pieces here. What I did was um, I did seven... Uh, 14 because it has to be the same length by um, I did 25 no I did 16 and a half and I fold it so 14 by 16 and a half so I have 14 this way and this way like this I have 16 and a half and I'm going to fold that to do this. And right now I'm just going to work with my lining. So I'm going to put my side here, my front, my outside piece. And I'm just going to work with my lining. And my lining is not interfaced. So we're going to need two of those pieces. So again, is 16 and a half this way and 14 this way for that size binder that I told you. But you can adjust that. You can definitely do that. And also what I did, I interfaced a little bit with uh, fusible, uh, fusible fleece. Uh, I believe it's SF, I um, can't remember the code. Um, I'll have a look and let you know what the, the fusible fleece is. So it's 987F. That's the fusible fleece that I interface here. And as you see, I went about uh, half an inch from the outside, half, half, and just right where my middle is, and I fuse only to one side. I don't want the whole thing because I don't want to have all that bulk in my seams around because this is going to have a lot of layers. 
So you're going to do that to both pieces. All right. So now I have this piece here and this piece here. And if you're working with directional fabric, just make sure the pattern is like going one direction. So at least it will look better. We also, on this one here, I added a pocket. And I did make a pocket here. And my pocket that I had here, it was 13 by 7. So as you see, I'm just going to turn it to the right side. So it was a long strip. It was 13 inches. And from here to here was 7 inches. And I fold it there, so there, and so there, and I'm going to turn it to the right side. And I'm going to add that pocket to one of my sides. Okay, either there or there. And I'm just going to add it to one of these pieces here. So I'm going to bring it to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. Uh, and I'm more likely center it, keep it off from the edge here a little bit more than from this side. And then you're going to go ahead and secure that to one of your sides. All right. So I have my sewing machine here. And I'm just going to go ahead. I need to move my needle. Let's see. All right. Let's bring the machine. I don't know if you can see it. So if you guys have any questions, you guys go ahead. You can ask, you know, if you have any uh, questions regarding... Uh, any of this project. I'm going to move my needle all the way to the edge and I'm going to go ahead and and sew that. So I'm just going to touch that. Make sure you secure the top really well because what you want is you don't want um, when you're using the pocket to fall apart on you. So you're going to go ahead and really secure it. Go back and forth a little bit in the beginning. So secure your stitch there. And I know this machine is slightly noisier than uh, the other one that I was using last week. But it's because um, my other one was giving me a few problems. I gotta check it over and see what's going on with it. Okay, so bear with me. This is also baby lock, but it's a different, uh, it's called um, not even sure that Rachel it's an older model that I had for a few years and um, but it's slightly a little louder than um, the quilter's choice question yes um, I'm late what are you making I'm making this project binder that we have here so you can fit an iPad or a tablet that has a pocket here and you can add in that binder your patterns if you go to sewing or something there's like pockets here that you can put on you can also uh, make uh, a couple fabric uh, pieces to go in here you put little rings and you can also use that to put things for sewing or school or whatever you decide that that will work for you So I'm going to put that there and I'm going to go ahead and also sew this side here. There's another question. Yeah. Uh, how often does she do a live stream? Question mark. Um, I don't do too many live streams, but lately that's the only way I can actually put up the videos. I still want to give you guys projects that you guys can work on or if you want to sell it or, you know, um, because coming Christmas, a lot of people need, you know, little things to uh, even for your kids or grandchildren. And uh, unfortunately, because I don't have very much time to uh, to record it any other way. So we decided that with live is a little easier because then I do the project right here. So you guys can see everything. Okay, so... I added the pocket to one of the sides, move that to the side, and what I'm going to do is now attach that to there and there. So I'm going to get a couple pins so this doesn't move, and I'm going to go here and I'm going to secure this from here to here and to here. Just secure it in place so when we put all the other layers, everything stays put. All right. Let's go ahead and 
put a couple ones here make sure all materials are even and we're gonna go ahead and just do kind of a stay stitch so everything can stay together and we're also gonna do the same here on this side and you know on this side you could also add a pocket I'm not adding it but you could you could definitely add a pocket if you want you know just we're gonna keep it slightly simple so you guys can so we can finish the project a little faster all right so the video will be up I know a lot of people ask all the time am I going to be able to see the video afterwards yes the video will be available afterwards on YouTube you guys can go back and watch it later and figure out all the measurements whatever you need to do okay so now we're going to go ahead and secure this in place oh I need one more pin here There we go again I'm sorry about the noise the machine is a little loud but it can't be helped so I'm just going to secure this in place you can even do a zigzag or something like that okay and that's done question yes uh, question from Jackie. Would you consider making projects with cork fabric? I actually ordered cork fabric for the store. So eventually I will be uh, showing you guys a few projects with cork. It hadn't arrived yet. But I will be having some cork actually available here. And um, I can't wait to try it and do something with it. Alright, so I attached there and there. So I can take my pins off and same thing on this side let's attach it all right Oop, sorry about that let's move the camera <laughs> Okay, and this part is done, so I secure both sides, and now we're going to work on the front. So this is our inside, alright, so I can take my pins off, put it here, and we're going to work on the outside. So I'm going to put this to the side for now, and uh, my outside, as you see, has a pocket here, has a pocket here that I have my tablet. And I told you I was going to show you how, and uh, a flap. So I'm going to give you the measurements of those. I'm also going to show you how to determine the size that you need for that. Okay. That moved. All right. So let's get started with that. So for my outside fabric, as I told you, I had here 25 by 14. That's the measurements that I cut according to my binder size and for my um, tablet according to the sizes remember that I said to you I had five by I think eight and a quarter I believe so I had yep so I have five by eight and a quarter okay so what are you gonna do you're gonna add two inches so if I have five I'm gonna cut seven inches okay and if I have eight and a quarter the bottom as we're not having seams right in the bottom I'm gonna do extend that to about nine you can go slightly bigger even nine and a half so I'm only gonna add that and that's gonna be four times so so if I do 9 times 4, I think I'm going to need a calculator. What is it? 9 times 4 is 30, 30, 32? 36. Oh, 36. Sorry about that. So 9 times 4 is 36. So I'm going to cut in one fabric 
36 plus whatever size of the flap that I need okay so twice so my flap here that I have here is five inches so I think with seam allowance would be a five and a quarter so that was my flap so I would do 36 plus uh, 11 that would be the whole piece from end to end from there to there all right so if you are going to do a flap in a different color then you're going to have to attach it to one end and make sure the picture is side out because this has to fold this way okay so so remember nine we measure nine and that's four times so and i'm going to show you why four times let me put this part here let's see so i'm gonna put these two together like this all right and i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna crease it here in the middle and that can also work for like any other uh, ipad or um, you know computer case that you're doing is the same idea so you would do a four times so um because we're only using one fabric for lining and outside fabric but if you have any doubts how to get this a little bit better you can definitely two weeks ago i did show how to make this bag so you guys can definitely go there and see it also so now that i have this right here folded in the middle and i creased it here in the middle i'm gonna open it and that crease that i have there you see that crease that i have there I'm going to bring it all the way up to my flap. See that crease right to the flap. My middle crease to the flap. See, and then if you see, if I put this here, look, and I fold that, it's exactly the size of my tablet. Okay then after you have that crease right on the flap right even with the flap you're going to bring the rest of the fabric that you have here all the way up and we're going to do exactly as we did last week's bag and the week before's bag i think you guys this is an extension of those projects that we've been working on because i just want you guys to see that sometimes when you learn one thing with that one thing you can go in so many different directions so it's really just knowing how to go about it and change it in so many different it's like building blocks you learn one and with that block with those couple blocks you can keep building on it and create other projects okay so i'm gonna go ahead and you remember last week we always sold left a little bit of the lining open so i'm gonna separate these like this first and I know the one here that has my um, my flap in this color, uh, that's not my lining. The one on top is my lining. So I'm this part here, I'm going to go here and I put a couple of pins here so my fabrics don't move. And as you see, I, around, I rounded my corners up here also. I forget to mention that. And you can either use a cup, uh, anything that you have around, or you can just cut it and eye it, whatever you prefer. Since I know this is my lining, I'm going to sew a little bit, a couple inches. And, and this time, I'm going to do middle position of my uh, needle. And I'm just going to follow the foot. I don't know if you guys can see it. So we'll give me about a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch seam allowance, almost half inch. All right? So and I'm gonna leave an opening here in one of the sides. So I'm gonna go back here. And I think I'm going to move the pin a little bit so I can have a bigger opening for my turn it out. And 
the top one this is why I like my uh, quilter's choice because it has a thread cutter so I don't have to worry so much about keep trimming those threads so it already does it for me you know you get used to all these little you know these little gadgets question uh, yeah um, hello I just signed on what are you making Okay, let's hold on a second until I finish this seam and then I'll show you what I'm making. Just one second. So we'll be making this little binder cover that you can use either for sewing that has a pocket here for a tablet or you can do it for an iPad, another pocket here. And then you can also have pockets in here to uh, carry other things for sewing or school or anything like that. Whatever you decide that you want to use it for. All right. Okay, so that's done. So now I'm going to go ahead and... Sew this all the way around. You remember all the other times when we did this bag? Even last week we did this bag and the week before we did this bag. So this is again, it's an extension of what we've been learning. So it's just to use that bag now into something else. You know? Yeah. So there's a comment from Nancy. Hello Gina, love your new live videos. I made the magical bag from last week and I love it. I used it at a fair this weekend, and it was perfect. Oh, that's good. What kind of fair? Was it you were in the fair, or you were just shopping? Okay, so I'm going to sew this all the way around. And this side here, as you see, this side, we sew a little bit like that to leave an opening on the lining. This one, we don't need to do that. We can sew it all the way to the end. Everything together. All right. And this one is done. Question? Yeah. Um, are there measurements and directions somewhere? We've made this bag and if you go back and watch uh, the beginning, I do show you how to measure your tools, your, uh, you know, iPad or, you know, just to get to the proper measurements. If you're using the same binder that I'm using, I do give measurements um, to the size that I'm using. So you can definitely go, go and rewatch. It's going to stay on YouTube so you guys can rewatch and see which measurements I've used on this. I just realized I didn't catch all my fabric, so I'm going back and do a little bit more here because I want to make sure everybody's caught. Okay. Just a follow-up from Nancy. It yep. was a renaissance fair and I did a lot of shopping. Wow, that's good. All Christmas shopping done, probably, or renaissance. So I'm going to trim this slightly closer to my seam allowance and curves, you guys all know, we normally do a couple clipping that direction so we can turn our turn is slightly nicer. All right, I'm going to turn it to the right side and let's bring all this up. Let's hope everything worked out. You know, does any of you guys have those days that, you know, you go so and seems to, you know, nothing works out. That, you know, you just better quit because everything you do, you just have to take it apart. Because I have a few of those days myself. And they can be very frustrating sometimes. Okay, let's see. Um... Of course, you would have to close this off. I'm not going to close mine off yet because we're going to have to add... Oh, you know what? I'm going to just add a simple magnetic snap. So you can definitely close this off in here. Question? Yes. Uh, would you pretty please do a tutorial for a bag that has a vinyl window with no exposed seams inside? 
drawstring or zipper? Vinyl bag, vinyl window. Well, I will have to do a little bit of research, see what you were talking about. Not sure exactly which bag you're talking about, but I'll have a look. I'll see what I can do if I see something that can be. So that's my pocket. So now I'm going to get my outside fabric. And as my binder is going to be going like this, okay, so my pocket should be going right over here somewhere. This is a really cute fabric. I love these little sewing machines. They're adorable. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, of course, press this first, but I'm going to go ahead and do a top stitch on my flap. And to top stitch, I always increase my stitch length to about three and a half to four. And I also move my needle right to the edge of my foot. So I'm going closer to the edge of the fabric. All right. You guys can also use Velcro if you don't want to use, uh, mag uh, I'm not going to use a magnetic snap, I'm just going to use those uh, other plastic snaps, they, they can be put on top because they'll be slightly easier. Question, uh, do you sew a straight stitch or zigzag? I sew a straight stitch. You can use a decoration sti uh, stitch that you have in your sewing machine. There's a lot of sewing machines has really neat uh, st uh, different stitches that you can definitely use as a top stitch. I tend to go just with a plain stitch. Um, I seem to like that better. I don't know why, but I seem to always go that direction. So we need to center this pocket. So or you know see where we want it I don't want to have my pocket too close to the edge so what I want to do is I want to put my binder now in the middle put my fabrics together here on the edge see where my binder is push it in all right and we, we're still gonna measure down but what I want to do is I want this to be closer to the back because when I have my flap I want to have space here for the flap so I'm going to go as close to the back as possible. So this here is good. This is pretty much where I want it. So I'm just going to put a pin and then I'm just going to measure, make sure it's center. It's, it's straight. All right. So I'm just going to go put a pin here and a pin here. And now I'm going to take my binder off and I'm going to go here. And I'm going to move this slightly. So I'm going to see how many inches I have here in the bottom with my ruler uh, that I left on the other table. Just a second. So I want to make sure my pocket is not crooked. So I'm going to go here in the bottom and I'm going to see... Okay, so I'm going to go slightly up on this side. So I have about two inches from the bottom up on mine. Okay, but if you want to go, if you want this to go slightly higher, let me see what I have here in the, high, in the top after I fold it. So I have here one, two, three. So I guess I can go slightly higher, a little bit, about a half an inch higher still. But as, what I want is this here to still be the same. So I have two, one, two and a half. And I'm just going to move this slightly up. Don't want to move it from here because that's what I wanted. I just want to center it here. Okay, and that's good. And... I'm going to put a couple pins 
And this is why we did it slightly bigger, is because we need an I, the, the, the tablet or the iPad, whatever you're using, to fit. So, so this, is, you see here, as you see here, this looks still a little loose, right? But by the time you do your top stitch in here and here, it will fit perfectly. That's why we gave those two inches extra. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sew this like this, like that, and like that. Make sure you really backstitch here, and then you end up with two pockets, one here and one in here. Let's do that. So has any of you made something like this before? Make sure you backstitch. And on this case, I don't want to use three and a half. I want to bring at least to two and a half. And I'm sewing right at the edge of my fabric. What do you guys think of this project? Anybody interested in making one? This pocket here, I didn't really interface. I only really put a little bit interface on my flap because I want it to be slightly uh, thicker. All right. All right. Just to answer your question, um, just to read out a couple of things. Awesome, love it. No, but I will tomorrow. Love it, yes. Thumbs up. I love oh. it. Okay, I love this. Would make a great idea for a journal cover. I see myself making one each for my grandchildren. I'll be making one, I think. Love. Great gift for a student. Okay. So, and this is my flap. And you see these little typewriters, they have little words. Or words still have meaning. So that's what this one say. All the other fabric has different uh, words coming out of the little typewriter. So they're really cute. So, um, so this is done. Now I need to do my flap. And the flap that I have here, you can do whatever size you want. You don't even have to do a flap if you don't want to. But I think it's to close it. I think will look better if you have a flap. So what I have here, measurement-wise, let's see, I have, I have 13 by 7. And I interface the middle, as you see, with a piece of fusible fleece. And I also round all the corners. So what I did, I went fold it like this and round my corners. I'm going to sew this all the way around and leave an opening here on the straight side to turn it to the right side. All right. And middle position. So about a half an inch seam allowance I'm using here. And with my opening. If you guys are beginners and you're not comfortable with, uh, like you see, I'm not putting pins, but if you need pins, put pins. Sometimes you, you know, you can do a better job when you have pins on. You know, since I'm kind of short for time, I don't want you guys to be here forever. I'm just kind of just putting it in the sewing machine and sew it. But definitely, if you need pins, put pins so your fabric doesn't move. 
and my usable fleece as you see didn't go all the way to the edge of my fabric because I want to laminate the bulk so um, now again here you're gonna also trim into your fabric just don't cut your seam be careful okay only on the round areas so when you open this the reason is then this goes like this and you get a better turn here all right so I have my opening here and I'm gonna turn to the right side and again I'm not really um, pressing anything I'm just you know sewing it but it, it's definitely ends up a lot nicer if you actually iron it first okay press it really nice first I'm just really doing finger pressing so I don't have to leave this area here because um, my iron board is all the way to the other side of the room. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a top stitch again. 3.5 and move the needle position all the way to the edge and sew it on. Okay, uh, one other thing that I'm going to explain to you guys is... I like to move my needle position when it's possible all the, all the way to the edge so I can use the foot as a guide. Uh, reason why is the feeding dogs will do a better job if you're using all of them versus, you know, sometimes you put it in a sewing machine and you try to go on the edge of the fabric but you have the needle in the middle position or on the left and you try to just use part of those feeding dogs to to uh, do your top stitch also a top stitch needle is really good you can also do that and use that so my flap is done so and then my flap is going to go on this side here so what I'm going to do I'm going to find my middle okay I'm going to just crease it and I'm going to find my middle of my flap Yes. So could you just go over the fabrics again? The size of the fabrics? I'm pretty sure she means like the like the the birth like the brands and the names and stuff like that. I think that's what she means. Okay, the brands that we have, the sewing one was uh, one stitch at a time. That was the sewing line that I used from uh, Henry Glass, I believe. Um, the pens actually is from Northcott, but all the other ones that I had here was from Henry Glass. This one is called again, I keep forgetting the name of this one. Um, this one here that I'm using here is also from Northcott. And what is the name? It's called... Um, oh. Letterpress. Letterpress. I don't know why it's so hard to have so many letters here. I should remember that, right? <laughs> You know, so it's called, this one here is called letter press. Okay, so I'm doing, that's my pocket, and then I'm going to go ahead and sew that there. I would say about two inches from the outside, because we're still going to lose a little bit of seam allowance. Let me move it here so you guys can see. Let's see. So I have about, let's see. Uh... I have about three inches actually from the edge okay so I'm gonna go ahead and attach that there again um, really secure it in this case here I think I need some things all right so I'm gonna go ahead and sew that there and needle up and Okay, make sure you really secure, go back and forth the beginning and the end. And we're 
gonna secure that there. And your project is almost done. All you have to do now is attach the our uh, inside fabric. Sew it around, turn it to the right side, do a top stitch, and you're pretty much done. I think we cover all the steps. So I'm just gonna trim that. So and that's done. So I have now that like this. I'm gonna just attach plastic snaps so I'm not bothering you. If you're gonna do Velcro, you can add it now. Uh, and also you probably would have to add it here before you put the other side. But because I am doing just the plastic ones, I can do it after, it's not a big deal. I can do it right after my project is done. So now I have this one here that has my pockets and this is where you need to pay attention. So pocket up and this pocket also has to be up. So we're gonna go ahead and put these like this. I'm actually gonna take my pin out so I don't poke myself. And there's another pin here that I, I'm going to move it. I'm going to leave the flap right turned to this side. And we're going to put these together. And I like sewing on a fusible side. So I'm going to bring this to this side. And now I'm going to pin it. So I'm going to go ahead and pin my corners first. Make sure my fabrics match. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this corner. And bring to this corner. And we're going to need to leave an opening somewhere, right? So I'm going to leave it somewhere here where I don't have any extra fabric or pockets. Okay? So that's where I want to leave my opening. Okay, that's there. And we're just going to know. Pin in the middle. Ooh. Okay. Yes? Question. Yeah? Uh, could you attach this flap into the hem of the front and inside of the binder, or does this make too much bulk? I think we'll add a little bit much bulk, but you can try it. There's no harm in trying, right? You know, if it doesn't work, you just take it out, right? But you could, I'm sure you could. Just make it smaller if you do that. Because um, I did mine bigger because I went three inches in. So if you're gonna do that, make sure you make it smaller. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew it all the way around. Question? Yeah. Do you poke yourself a lot? Because I know I do, lol. <laughs> Sometimes, not too much actually. Uh, I've been sewing for a long time, so, but you do. Oh, um, with the cutters, sometimes you gotta be careful and always make sure you close it because sometimes every little touch can, um, you can cut yourself. Actually today, as you see, I have a bandit here. It was because I was cutting fabric and I left this slightly open and when I moved my fingers, just touch the blade and, it cut a tiny little bit, not nothing big. I never hurt myself big, but these can be dangerous, so definitely you should be careful. Another thing that I would like actually to mention to you guys that I think it's really important is you should never be sharing pins. Uh, if you teach kids or adults, if you go to classes, uh, pins should never be shared because for that reason that you were just talking about, because you poke yourself and then what happens, you have blood contamination. So you don't know who's taking the class, what can happen. So might as well don't share your pins. Make sure everybody has their own pins. At least you're safer that way. So I hope, hopefully you guys knew that and were already doing that. If you're not, I think that's a good way of, you know, just protecting yourself against other things that's out there sometimes, right? So you never know. So uh, I would suggest no sharing pins. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around and I'm going to leave an opening there. And I'm doing about a half an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to make sure my fabrics are even together.
So have it, any of you guys have thought about the sharing the pins? I already have an answer for that for you. Yeah? Um, a couple of people already said, great tip, never thought of that before, uh, stuff like that. Okay, well that's good. There's a lot of things, sometimes we don't think about it, but there's a lot of things out there that sometimes, you know, someone tells you and then you realize, oh wait a minute, I... You know, it happens to me a lot sometimes. People tell me things I'm always learning. I definitely don't know everything. And I don't think I'll ever will. So uh, any tip is always a good tip. So if you already knew, you already knew. If you didn't know, that would be great to know. All right. almost there I know this takes a little while to go all the way around but it's almost there we're pretty much almost done so hopefully it wasn't too long for you guys it's a quite it's kind of fast project I believe I mean I had already my uh, fabrics uh, cut and interfaced but if you think about it I've been answering questions stuff like that and you know, it has been almost an hour so we've been doing this so it's not a very um, hard project to do and a lot of you ask me can I sell yes you can I don't have a problem with you selling anything I make here if you can make some money great I'm glad I could help I went too far. Okay. Almost to my end. Almost there. I'm going to leave a small opening, but if you're not comfortable with a small opening, leave it a little bit long, wider. I think I'm leaving about three inches. But if you're not comfortable with three inches, you can definitely leave four. Yeah. Question. Uh, can you do a wallet sometime? Um, I could. I'm still kind of thinking about it. There's tons of patterns out there already of wallets. Um... That most people had bought and got so maybe eventually I'll do a wallet I have to create something slightly different I always want to kind of put a little bit twist on it so I'll think about it maybe I'm sure you guys have made wallets right there's some great patterns out there for wallets so I'm doing just trimming my corners and I'm making sure I actually cut everything on my lining also since I was sewing on my fusible side that's another tip that I always tell everybody sew on a fusible side so your fabric doesn't stretch okay so this is done so if you have anything that you need to trim treads uh, anything like that go ahead and trim it and we're gonna turn it to the right side and have a look okay so Gonna go ahead here. For those there are here in Canada and um, in Brampton or you know surrounding areas, we started a sewing club, a monthly sewing club. So if you ever want to uh, join, uh, you'll get, we'll sew a project just like what I'm doing here and um, you'll get a pattern for that project. Uh, the patterns that I'm actually using, uh, some of the patterns that I'll be using will be actually uh, 
patterns from other um, other people that made them. Some of them are not going to be my own patterns, that, but they will be getting those patterns on the sewing club. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these. And... Okay. Of course, I'm going to have to iron this and do a top stitch but we can already have a look I have a binder here I'm going to give it a try I'm just going to go ahead right now Just I'm going to just turn my fabric in and in for now and get my binder and let's have a look I still need a top stitch but at least we'll already Give me the idea, okay? You see, it's still a slightly looser, but it's okay because I still need to do a top stitch around. So when I do my top stitch, this will be closer. So, and now I have that there. And let me trim these. That goes there. There's my pocket. I'm gonna put it here, just a, with a pin now because I'm gonna put uh, plastic snaps on it. Just bring it, bring my corners out. Okay, and again, this also I'm gonna put those plastic snaps. When you add these here, don't go close like this because you're gonna need room when you put things in there. It's not going to work. So you need to leave the, this. Or you can put different snaps. Some more to the end. More to the. A couple in and a couple out. So you can change them. When you put things in. That you have space. Right. So you want to be like that. So you might want to put a couple more in. If you don't have much in. And then put two more there. So when it's fuller. So you have the space also. And I'm not going to be doing the top stitch right now, just to take more of your time. But now you guys understand. So what are you going to do? You're going to take the binding, iron it, and do a top stitch all the way around again. And your project is done. I hope you guys uh, make one and send me pictures. Um, I think I've mentioned before that uh, I opened a new page on Facebook. It's called I'll Be Sewing. And you guys can definitely go there. And... Um, and send me pictures through there. Fabrics, they're all linked. Yeah. Okay, and the fabrics are in the description of the video. If it's something that you guys like, um, they definitely are there. And you can uh, get some if that's something that you like. So we're done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hope you guys have a good night. And uh, we'll see you next week. Happy sewing, everyone.